Hello everyone, Emma is here and we're talking today about Nocturne by Chopin. I should say that this music is very very intense and if you don't have enough energy between notes, between sounds, then you might end up playing this piece in a very boring way. Of course there could be some fixing methods uh, suggested by your teachers like playing faster, uh, playing louder and well that doesn't usually help. So on the other hand if you're using all musical mean of expressions by piano system then you will be in the place where you don't have to rush, you don't have to change the dynamics in order to keep the piece together and play it very expressively. So I'm gonna share with you four tips today how you could improve your performance. First of all, um, uh, you have to achieve very uh, expressive singing tone in your melody with good intonation. Then you have to follow all the marked dynamics. And if it says piano, especially in the last part, in the last section, you have to play it piano. Uh, you have to have this very gentle touch and at the same time very expressive one. You have to make correct, good, clear phrasing and form in this piece that will help you distribute energy while playing. And lastly, you have to follow the, uh, the time and to choose the right tempo. And if it says lento in the beginning, then you should play it very broad and don't rush and if it says agitato at the end you should play it quite lively <laughs> not slow <laughs> so um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how you can achieve all of this uh, for the right hand uh, to achieve the singing tone um, I'm gonna use and imagine beautiful vocal voice like soprano apparently and I'm gonna use sound movement and the wrist that will follow sound if you want to know about this more I suggest you to watch video called corrective production or um, music is between sounds where I talk in details and explain in details how to achieve this tone also, you have to follow and play it with good intonation, uh, following all the musical speech, the meaning of each interval you should understand, and that will bring you uh, closer to real singing speech, to real singing intonation, so your melody will always float and will be very expressive. <laughs> so just a little example for you, I'm gonna play without intonation first and then with intonation and you will see the difference. So this is without. is how it changes your intonation and playing. <clears throat> For left hand I would choose a string group of instruments, like common things, some cellos and violas I guess. <laughs> In the middle part I uh, actually use the choir, it's like I'm imagining some kind of choir of angels. <laughs> because let me tell you, the whole part, the whole like drama of this um, I think 
The first and the last section is human being emotions and the middle part is like spiritual world. <laughs> so that's why I'm using here um, timbers of choir in the middle part. Um, and in the very end you have to really uh, imagine separately melody then accompaniment with violins and violas and cellos. The second stage is, uh, let's talk about dynamics. So you have to imagine everything piano and um, to be able to highlight your uh, melody you simply imagine that you come to the timbre, for example, you come to the singer <laughs> closer. So even though she sings in the same timbre, very soft, um, in the in the mark in the mark um, harmony, you can hear this timbre closer and more clear because you closer to the to the voice. So even if I play. And the texture itself is very soft. I still manage to highlight and to voice my melody. I'm not playing it forte like this. to play super soft because all these chords you have to control. Um, I should tell you that when I'm playing my muscles here are working like I'm playing some like Rachmaninoff or Lee's texture. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's very very tense because I have to control every single note especially if you play the piano it's so difficult to catch every note and for that as we know we have to imagine every note in the chord. Make sure that it's not actually difficult here, the chord consists only of three notes, so make sure that all three notes in the chord you can hear clearly in your mind. And, uh, well, when you come to the last section, I would highlight in the accompaniment, because I need to highlight one voice in the accompaniment, otherwise everything will be too thick and wouldn't let my melody float. <laughs> so I'm imagining the top voice in the left hand. So um, this one I highlight, uh, I, I voice, and the rest on the background. to keep pianissimo in your accompaniment. Again, make sure that even in this text you imagine every single note to, to be able to control what you're playing. And about phrasing and um, form. So let's talk about phrasing first. The limit of moti is one bar here. And everything comes to the first beat of the new bar. So this is one motive. Always go through the bar line. 
that really helps especially in the middle part uh, to make sure that you keep this uh, phrasing through the bar lines through this um, long chords like half medium so here you always have to know where you to go again if you want to really know how to make it because it's not just enough to know how to make it you need to know how to make it on the piano you will watch my video in the less my lesson video called phrasing I explain again in details how to make phrasing so um, I think I don't need to really play by motifs here whereas because really he remains the same pattern all the way through one motif, one bar. Everything comes to the first beat of the next bar. <clears throat> or let's say to the last interval of the motif. <laughs> um, so about phrasing. Phrasing would consist of two motifs. And uh, I would make first motif more important in this two motif phrase. So, for example, in the beginning, I would make the first motif more important. I will play it faster. First more. inside and I emphasize and make more important the last motive so the first two less important and the last one is important so the first Two motives, and 
either first motif is more important or second. And we're coming back to the fr to the sentence. The sentence is gonna consist of two phrases, means four bars. And let me play again in the beginning. The first phrase and uh, the first phrase is gonna be more important in the sentence. So the first more. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing right now fast, so I cannot really make motives inside to show you, but just make sure. Sentence, you know which phrase is more important in the sentence, and you know which motive in the phrase is more important. <laughs> so, okay, let's go on. Um, the first phrase is less important. <laughs> consists of three motifs as we talked just now. So let's go. First layers. When I'm playing, I spend a lot of energy to make it because music is slow, music is soft, plus music consists of chords. It's just the terrible combination for us to keep the line, to keep the phrase. So even if you follow the phrasing here, it's still hard <laughs> because it's so slow. So um, that's why I just want to show you details. So um, this sentence consists of again like four bars one sentence and uh, basically the same like in the beginning and second phrase less first sorry first phrase less second phrase more so let's go <laughs> to make the line and to keep 
attention, like keep the music together. <laughs> anyway, so beginning is the first sentence. I actually distribute form parts of the form by sentences, so it's very easy. One sentence, one part of the form. So I'm choosing this one. It's like beginning. Now next one. Development. This one. Uh, intensification. This one rising to climax. And this one climax. First part consists of uh, five parts: beginning, development, intensification, rising to climax, and climax. So one more time, if you want to know about the form, better go to my video in the lessons that calls form. Again, I explain how to um, express the form through performance because that's not just that's not enough to just know the uh, parts of the form. Um, again, all of these serves for you to keep energy between sounds when you play. <laughs> and this one helps you to play even in very slow tempo, very expressive. <laughs> you will not lose the music. Music will always on and on and on. So, in the middle part, this one, again, beginning. to the pianissimo actually I just noticed something every time he comes to the climax section in the first part he says dolce very gentle in this part he writes pianissimo which is love, simply the first time actually and even in the last section when he comes to the um, culmination it's still in the piano uh, range, it's not forte over there. So that's why this next year is so intense, because you have to express through piano so many things. All right, so that would be combination. This pianissimo and then forte. some two parts, rising to climax and climax. So this would be rising to climax. And the climax. So let me, st let me summary this. Um, the middle part consists of... Four, one, two, three... Okay, whatever, I cannot count. Middle part consists of beginning, development, rising to climax, climax, and again rising to climax, climax in different scale of emotion. And the last part with agitata, um, just like in the beginning. So that would be beginning. <laughs> So this, the last six bars, I'm using conclusion. So the last section. 
action consists of beginning, development, rise, intensification, rising to climax, climax, and conclusion. So the uh, last thing I want to talk about is the time. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you that you really don't have to rush over here. I try to play it more lively than it's written and I kind of lose expressiveness. So, if you able, again guys, if you can express, musical means expression, through distance between notes, then you able to keep the energy between notes and that means that if you stretch the time. If you play it slower, then you simply stretch the energy between notes. You do not lose the energy as as soon as you play it slower. And this is the whole point. So, in the very beginning, I'm actually everywhere. I'm pulsating by crotchets. So, um, I would feel inside this. What is that? <laughs> I would feel inside this heartbeat of emotional image and it will be dun, 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 because lenta is very 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 slow so if you play andante for example or andantino as usually people play you kind of lose the character but this this image of music is so, well, it's very deep, so you have to play it very slow. So I'm choosing, I'm tuning into emotional image and I'm choosing this heartbeat which is very slow. And I'm just playing. Keep in mind all the phrasing. I keep in mind all the form of music. So I'm not losing anything if I play slow. <laughs> and trust me, with all the tragedy and drama of this piece is in this slow tempo. The middle part, poco più lento, it's even slower. With agitata, you have to find, for me, it took really some time to really find the balance between playing too rush this agitata, too lively, or not playing lively at all. So, make sure again that when you come to this image, first of all, you understand what this music, what this music is about, you feel this emotion, and then you give this emotion the correct heartbeat, and you still pulsate by crotches, so it will be. So if you take, that will be too rush. If you take. That would be too like chilling out. <laughs> so you have to really find this balance. I don't know. Just play hundreds of times unless you find it. Because that will really reflect your combination. If you play it too rush, then combination will be. <laughs> you will not feel anything. And again, if you play too slow, then you will not feel any like tension in this combination. So you will lose it as well. <laughs> so make sure you choose the right tempos. And of course, please pay attention to all the ritenutas, like here. <laughs> It's also written out over there, so you're gradually going slower and slower and slower and slower and slower <laughs> until you reach probably the very first original tempo in the very beginning of the piece.
So that would be it, guys. I just would like to add some little thing about uh, elbow movement because I'm sure this is critical here. Um, you fly over the keyboards with your left hand all the time, <laughs> especially in the last section. And if you don't really want to be disturbed by that and um, be very disappointed by missing the notes, then you have to circle the notes to make sure you make um, correct uh, wrist elbow movement. So in the beginning, I'm still moving my wrist left, but I'm moving my elbow right. I'm moving my wrist right, elbow left. So it looks like this, if I play in the very first stage. And of course, if you can see, when I play, even in slow tempo, this movement is so slow that you would never tell what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, when it comes to this section with octaves, you know, when you need to switch from octaves to the chords, like here. So if you want to make sure you play all the notes, then the very last note, move your elbow first to the position, then move the rest of your hand. And again, move your elbow first back to the octave. and full of emotion so I'm not distracted by my left hand my left hand does does not bring me down you know <laughs> especially here you know achieve accuracy in, in the lips as well. So now that would be it. And just also take your time and listen to the harmonies of this piece and just, oh my god, just discover the whole beauty of this music through the harmonies. Um, thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye!